Hey everybody, John Filio here from Insightful Recordings, and today I'm going to be giving you another quick audio tutorial. We're going to be using Elastic Audio within Pro Tools to edit some guitar tracks. Now, first things first, I just want to show you the track we're working with. We're working with that same band that we did the bass drop tutorial with called Copperhead. This track is called Translucent. Basically what you're going to hear is just the start of the track with DI guitars and some program drums. Now, as you can hear, the guitars are all played the same way. There's four different guitar tracks for the rhythm guitars, and then there's a lead on top of it. They are all playing the same thing, pretty tight, but as you can hear, like parts right here, it's not as tight as it possibly could be. And that's kind of what we're shooting for with heavy music or metal music or sometimes rock music. We're trying to get the tightest possible thing in. Even at times, it might sound robotic, but that's kind of what we're shooting for. There's a couple ways to go about this. The method I'm going to be showing you today is elastic audio. Now, what I want to do is, first thing, set your grid to the smallest interval note that you're going to be working with. Right here, I think it's 16th notes. Yeah. So we're just going to be doing this first section of the track. Next thing you want to do is go to each of these tracks and turn on elastic audio. Good rule of thumb, pick polyphonic for tracks that have multiple notes in them. Pick rhythmic for tracks when there's just a constant pitch throughout the whole track, such as drums. All right, now we're gonna switch each of these tracks to warp. Okay, now you'll see all these little black lines everywhere. Basically, those are just markers indicating where a transient begins. Now you'll see like right here, there's only two notes here, but there's a bunch of lines. That's because some guitars, such as ones with EMGs in them, put out pretty compressed signals, which don't have much definition. So it's hard for the program to basically tell where the beginning of the transient is. Just by listening to it and looking at it closely, it's pretty easy to tell. For example, right here, you can see the note starts here. This is just a misindication. Same as right here, the note starts there. This is just another misindication. So you'll have to know which ones as we go to ignore and which ones to make use of. Our first two markers we're gonna be putting in for each track, I like to call your anchor markers. They keep your track from moving out of place once you start working within it. Now you'll see right now, say I, I grab this note and I pull this around, I do whatever with it. Then I zoom out, you're gonna see it threw off the entire track terribly. So, and we don't want that ha to happen. So undo, we'll go back in. For each of these, we're just gonna single click on these first notes, one, two, three, four. You'll see it adds a marker to the beginning of the track. Then we're gonna move to the end of the song, double click the end of the track, just in blank space, it'll basically set an anchor point to the end. So once we start moving some transients around, it won't start making the track all sorts of out of place. From here, it's smooth sailing. You basically just go ahead, click the transients, and snap them into the place that they're supposed to be. As long as you have a good idea of how the song is supposed to sound and how the part's supposed to sound, it's pretty easy. Now, this is simple. There's a long held out note here and then two 16th notes then a couple eighth notes, and sixteenths again right here. It's pretty repetitive throughout this whole part, so I can kind of just look and snap them into place as necessary. Now, you can pretty much go through the whole song and do this the whole way, but there may be some parts, such as right here, where you're like, do I really need to go through and click all these? So what you can do is, Highlight this section. Now we see we have eighth notes here, sixteenths right here. So we're gonna press Alt, zero. That'll pull up the quantize screen. Then we're gonna set 
what we want the grid to be. Obviously, the smallest we're working with is sixteenths. Want note on and preserve note duration. You might have to select again for the apply to pop up, and then you're going to press apply. And for the most part, it's usually pretty good on snapping them into the right position, but you'll see sometimes it misses some. You'll just have to grab it and snap it into place. Now, a good thing to know is that you do not want a group on the tracks that you're working with. Just for example, I'm going to throw all these tracks I'm working on into a group. Let's we'll call it test. When I click on one of the tracks, you'll see it adds a marker in that exact same spot to all the group tracks. But even though they're playing the same thing, they're not all exactly played the same way. You'll see, you'll see this marker is nowhere near this transient. So it's good to take those groups off. Don't worry about groups right now. They are good in situations where you have something with multiple mics on it. We'll cover that in another video, such as how to edit drums. Now I'm just going to go through and edit the rest of this intro section. Once you get a ton of markers put in, you should be looking at something a little bit like this. You should see lots of these little blue arrows everywhere, but everything should look pretty nicely aligned. Let's give it another listen. Pretty good. Now these tracks are ready to be reamped or have a amp sim plugin thrown on them. Last thing you want to do is just turn off the elastic audio on all the tracks that you're working on. This will help your computer to work more smoothly and not run into any sort of crashing by having a ton of tracks with elastic audio on them. So you're just going to go over, click elastic audio, and press disable elastic audio. Then it's going to ask you if you want to revert the tracks to their original state or commit them to the new quantized version that you have created. Obviously, you don't want to undo all the work you just did, so you're going to press commit. You'll see the track load for a second, and there you have it. If you are using an AmpSim plugin, one thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you go through and delete any dead space between notes. This is going to help get rid of guitar noise and overall clean up your track a lot. Then you can go to the pieces that you cut out, highlight them, control F, add some fades, and you'll get rid of any clicks and pops. Now, if you are reamping these through an actual amp and cab or through some sort of outboard guitar effects processor, such as an Axe Effects or a Kemper, then you're going to want to save this part for after reamping because lots of the time when you ramp, you're just going to pick up more noise in this dead space anyways. So you're doing double the work for no reason. Reamping, wait till after to delete the dead space and using a plugin, delete the dead space right after you quantized. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.